Hey Riders, Sunday morning, March 17th, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we're back again, just getting into the zone here. Team GRC Sunday short race, it's going to be short, but you're going to suffer on this one. We've got Horseshoe Pass, we are located in, uh, I guess it would be in Wales. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the names of the towns around here. Did zoom in on Google Maps, had a nice look at the area. Checked out the topography. We're right on like the northern edge of like this raised plateau area. I mean, mountainous area here, but it looks like a plateau to me. Uh, the towns nearby, all I can say is the names are all W's, Y's, and D's. It's kind of the Welsh way of spelling things. And a lot of W's, double Y's, double D's. Um, so they're very hard to pronounce, but we're at Horseshoe Pass. This course here is uh, 6.73 kilometers long with 324 meters of climbing. I was supposed to be in this one. However, if you've seen my last video, you know, last Monday I went through some dental surgery and it's really beat me up. Uh, the painkillers, the steroids, and the, uh, what else am I on? Painkiller steroids, oh, and the antibiotics. So I rode, th I took three days off. I rode Thursday, Friday, and both days leveled me. Like we're, you know, sometimes I joke about having a nap after a bike ride. A nap for me after a bike ride means just chill out, watch some YouTube, watch some cycling videos, you know, watch some gaming videos, whatever. Uh, these were like, go to bed for four hours, turn the lights off and go to bed. Um, and in fact, yesterday, got up Saturday morning, did my thing, went to bed just afternoon, woke up for half an hour, slept till two o'clock in the morning. So I basically slept for... 14 to 15 hours straight. So I just didn't think I could do this one today, but guess what? The majority of the crew's here. Here we go, folks. Three, two, one. It's boom time. Let's roll. Okay. We're off. We're traveling in a south. We're traveling from the south to the north uh, across this big plateau area. You can actually see it ahead of us. So we're down below right now, and we're going to start climbing our way up it. Uh, what I saw here too is that there's lots of uh, slate quarries nearby and you know of course being the geologist that I am Nobby Styles here off to a great start being pursued by Kraken 71 Nelson Snyder's here as well Clive Ribbons at the front uh, now we're not sure how the draft dynamics are going to work on this one today uh, we're, we've got little blips we've got some flatter stuff though where the draft might kick in a bit more uh, let me take a look here folks just to see how many riders were here um, we're expecting to have, you know, slightly lower turnout for our rides, and, and fair enough. Uh, so at the back here, we've got Omar Andres V. I'm not sure how you said that exactly, but uh, looks like a little bit of a late starter here. Joining us, Chris Bowie, Oscar GTZ, who looks like he's having a little bit of troubles at the moment. we got Gio Merlin here. Hey, Gio. Uh, Tecapolka, uh, very... Uh, in the Discord all the time now. Sorry, folks, stumbling over the words as usual. Geo Marlin, we got Des here, Eat More Cake, Rossa Duke, me. Okay, me, I know, was at the team time trial. I'm not sure who this rider is at the moment. I apologize for that. We got John B, 1982, just up ahead. John was part of uh, my team time, team time trial crew. I think it was um, when I came back from Vegas in February. I had to join a later crew. Because I just didn't think I could do it that early in the morning. Uh, J. Margolius just up ahead. Stu. Honest Jack. SR71. Nobby Styles. Kristen's here as well. Kristen's getting really strong on the bike. Hey, I heard Kristen's got a brand new bike too. Congratulations, Kristen. Uh, she's got a nice one too. It's something that you might find on Ruby. Um, we had it for a while and then it got taken away. I don't think it cost her 50,000 gold coins, but... They're kind of pricey. Uh, anyway, nice job there. Ooh, just up ahead, we got Purple Bengal here. So let's see where Purple Bengal, currently in 19th. Almost going to guarantee you that's going to change. Once we start hitting the climb, Purple Bengal enters her element. Uh, Gidgar 69, Danon's here. Danon's really been putting some good efforts in lately. Uh, I think Cyclone's really starting to consume his life. That and making websites. Uh, Roger's here. 16th place, riding with Kraken and Gitgar. Arluzar, we got Alex here. 
Uh, yep, yeah, nice three watts per kilo out of Alex. We're on the, the bit of the false flatty 2% stuff. Jill's is here. Hey, I thought Jill's wasn't riding today. Maybe Jill's plan change. And congratulations, Jill's. He bought himself a new car yesterday. Got his first EV. Nice pictures I saw on uh, Facebook there, Jill's. Or, or sorry, in the Discord. Uh, contemplating one myself. Don't know if I want to go full EV. I know there's some that have like the tiny engine with um, a battery range. I think some of them can go out to like 40, 45 miles. So what would they be like 70K, maybe 75 kilometers, all electric. And then when that cuts out, then that tiny engine kicks in and start running everything for you. I kind of like that idea. Then you're never stuck. You're always on the go. Uh, and that little engine that it does have is enough to get you down the highway too. So, okay, so we got someone here called Mark J at the front. Uh, is a very high level rider. So obviously he's been around a Ruby a long time. I've just never seen them on here before. Someone will correct me saying, how do you not know this guy? Well, I just haven't seen them in our rides. Uh, so let's just jump back. I think we had 38 this morning. Let's just have a quick peek. I think Omar was our 38th rider. Yeah, Omar's, Omar's 38th. And we were discussing this this morning. We expect to see less riders now. Uh, it's nice out. It's middle of the afternoon in Europe. You probably have beautiful weather. Uh, in fact, we have nice weather here today too. It's early morning for me. Check out Nelson Snyder here. Smashing out 5.5 watts per kilo in the middle of these climbs. Grinding his way up. So again, we're heading from south to north. Up over the top of this plateau area. Um... Lots of slate quarries nearby. And if you're interested in what slate is, slate is a shale sedimentary rock that has been metamorphosed. Uh, so you have sedimentary rocks, you have igneous rocks, and you have metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are just those, it's basically sedimentary rocks that have been exposed to heat or high pressure, and they've been changed slightly. So all those slate tiles that you have on your roofs over in Europe... I'm sure there's parts of the states that do here too, and maybe Eastern Canada might have some slate tiles. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, very durable. Those slate tiles will last for hundreds and hundreds of years. Slate was, a, slate was initially once a shale. It's been exposed to heat and pressure. Um, and it became slate. Virtually, you know, waterproof. Water just goes right off it. It's got incredible cleavage planes on it, so these guys called slaters can crack them open and uh, put all those beautiful slate tiles on your roofs. 15% gradient here for Nelson, chasing after Mark J. Mark J pushing 5 watts a kilo, uh, 70 kilogram rider. Nelson, slightly heavier rider. Not much, though. Maybe Nelson's probably like 80 And look at Nelson's making the move on Mark J right now. Nelson's pushing over 6. Mark looks like he's struggling to maintain the five, and it's going to give Nelson a chance to get away on the steepest stuff. Now, will Mark be able to recover on the bit of a flat here? Clive Ribbons, uh, only 30 meters back from them. Clive, super strong. Uh, part of our team time trial on Friday. Let's talk about that quickly. So the Gem City, ICC, team time trial went off on Friday. I think we had nine official teams, and a tenth team jumped in at the end. I haven't got all the standings yet. And for anyone waiting on the video, it's in the works. Um, like I said, after the team time trial on Friday, I'll tell you what happened in that. Our five-man team, GRC+. Plus, uh, so it's the, the three GRC members. It's Tony Yeager and it's Clive Ribbons. We all went out. I managed to hang on with the front two till maybe two-thirds of the way. Rogers and Jills were just behind us a tiny bit. Uh, I kind of blew up at that point. Again, just not feeling 100% yet. Uh, we're just going to bounce back here. I drifted back to Roger and Jill's, and then we actually managed to squeak back a little bit of a distance on the front two. Uh, but yeah, that, that team time trial event is going to be such a big thing going forward. Everyone loves it. Uh, for there was five muckers that put a team in as well. I believe they're all muckers, but it was called team muckers. Tudin, um, Grosjean, M4B, I'm forgetting names. Uh, I think Andy up was there. Was it? No, Andy was in a later race. Yeah, I apologize. I, I've talked about this before, but yeah, five really strong Muckers riders just blew the field out of the water. Did not win uh, just due to the handicapping system. Uh, so we got Mala Noel here. Got that name down. TK Ladding, 1964. 
just uh, trailing them. Here's Holly87. Holly is our superstar climber for Team GRC. Alex is hanging with her though. Check this out. Holly pushing uh, 210, 220 watts. Alex hanging around 300. Uh, once it steepens up a bit, Holly should be able to pull ahead again a little bit here. Hopefully they're working together. We've got Jetro just right behind them. Trigger 84. I've seen Trigger around a lot. Good to see you again. Arluzar right here as well. Granddad Rick, he's back. He's back in action. Here's Bashok. Uh, Bashok teased me into racing today. Um, I love the, uh, the motivation, but I just couldn't do it today. I, I got to get some stuff done today. Um, and I know if I push myself doing this, I'll be down for the count again. So I'd rather make the video, um, get my stuff done. I need to do before I decide to go nappy time again. I think I mentioned in the discord, got a little bit of a job interview tomorrow. So I want to be rested and refreshed for that. You know, daddy's got to make some money at some point, right? Uh, Anthony's here. Great job. See Anthony rocking it for GRC. Here comes Purple Bengal. So earlier, Purple Bengal was in 19th position. Let's watch Purple Bengal slowly wake, make her way up the field. Now, a little bit of steepness here. It's going to level off again. I would expect Purple Bengal, if you look on the profile on the bottom of the screen here, uh, Purple Bengal should be able to pass quite a few more riders on the second little steep part. That's about two-thirds of the way into the course here. Um, she might lose a spot or two back on the flatter stuff at the top. But now she's into 15th place, just trailing right behind Jill's here. Uh, Roger G, I'm not sure who this is, um, but glad to have you on board here. And we're just going to jump back a little bit and see everyone's doing at the back here. Okay, so we got Gio Merlin at the back, 38th place. Rossa Duke just ahead in 37th. Ket Kapolka. Let's actually take a look at the map. So it's called Horseshoe Pass because as you work your way from south to north, I guess it forms like a big of a horseshoe around the side of the uh, of the plateau of the hill system that's ahead of us. You can see it above us. So the road's going to kind of work its way around the flanks. Um, I'm imagining, if you look at the top of the screen right now, that's probably the actual start of the, the horseshoe. You can see a little red dot. If you look up in the top left corner of the screen, it swings way left skirts a bit more north and then swings way back to the right again that's actually what they call horseshoe pass there's a viewing point up there hey and don't forget when you get to the top at the very end there's a place called the ponderosa cafe it's supposed to be fantastic up there so you do your little bike ride stop in uh, pretty jealous that there's rides like this and i never get to do them uh, okay so heading back here we got Ket Kapolka. we got des des is doing a great job today here too chris bowie Omar's moving up. So I think Omar, in the tough stuff right now in the 15%, Omar was in last place at the beginning, 38th. Probably started 15, 20 seconds late and is now slowly progressing through the field. We've got Oscar GTZ here. Eat more cake. Here's John again. John's looking good. He's got his Lidl Trek gear on. Honest Jack, Niagara Freewheelers. Danon. Kristen. Uh-oh. Come on, Danon. You got to catch her up the road there. Uh, uh, Dane, uh, Kristen's hanging strong here on John's wheel, SR71. Oh, John's got a different jersey on today. What's going on here? Where is the skeleton suit? We've got Stu up ahead. I feel like I should know Stu for some reason, and I believe Stu is in the Discord. Um, so we'll, we can chat about that later, but I think Stu is in the Discord for sure. Here's David1951. Uh, David's been in a lot of the videos lately, and... Um, I noticed recently is a member of this court. Here's Jeff. Jeff, one of the muckers, is out hanging out with us today. Thanks for showing up, Jeff. Uh, helps keep the numbers up. So what I'm thinking, folks, is that, yeah, all the races, you know, Sunday's races, kind of from what I've seen historically over the last three months now, the big Sunday races are the muckers race and then our short race. And I looked this morning, both races, the numbers are probably a third down at least, maybe even a half for us. Uh, that's because people are getting outside and that's cool. I think once the spring rains hit, you're all going to be back inside riding with us. Or maybe just look at this as your 20 to 30 minute ultimate VO2 max effort once per week. Or just kind of schedule it with your rides. Maybe you do like a, 
a slow, easy warm-up ride for this and then smash yourselves. We'll see what happens with the weather, right? So let's pop back to the front. Looks like we still got our two riders up front. We got Mark J and Nelson Snyder. Here's some of that slatey stuff. This is kind of cool to see here. That's all the slate. Uh, Mark J has gotten ahead of uh, Nelson Snyder again here. Uh, so I'm sure someone will point out to me later who Mark J is. And if we look at the profile now, we're coming out of the horseshoe now. That's it. There's one of the quarries nearby. Uh, when I looked on the maps, I think I saw three little quarries right nearby. And I thought it was pretty cool. Look at the top of the map. See these little lines in the field here? I, I had no idea what those were looking at the, uh, the satellite photos. They're like just little stretches. I don't know if it's like little tiny farm areas in the forest down below. Kind of strange to me. If you're from Wales and you know what they're doing there, let me know. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Okay, Nelson's taking the lead over again here now. So now it's going to be an all-out race to the finish. Everyone's heart rates are probably just jacked through the roof. Uh, love this stuff. So if you want to come and have your ultimate hardest workout of the week, that's super short, it's probably right here, folks. You can do all the riding you want, but this is always going to be, just plan on this being the Sunday short race as your blowout race, where you're just going to dump everything into it, and then that's it. I'm done. It's like Sunday, I'm going to tinker around the yard. Nelson's pushing at 6 watts a kilo now. Trying to drop Mark, but Mark's hanging on strong here. Uh, we got a 16 meter gap. And you can see the damage they've done behind. So Clive is currently 500 and something meters back. But Clive's riding totally solo here. Check this out. The other two are off the screen. He's just coming out of the... Yeah, if you look here, that is Horseshoe Pass there. That whole shape you're seeing right now. Clive's on the, the finishing, and the rest are coming up the first part. That's what they actually call the horseshoe, right there. So that was good to see. So Clive is riding totally solo. They're back to T-Cat, who's leading a bunch of riders coming in here. So let's go back here. Got Mal and Noel, the man of four names. Alex, Team GRC. Jetro, Holly 87 in eighth place. Now let's work our way back again. Let's see where Purple Bengal is. Got Bashak here. Riding strong, one of the Clydesdale riders, you know, so huge efforts, pushing huge watts to get that 90 kilogram plus body weight up the hill. Looks like we got Purple Bengal now in 13th place. Okay, and she's only 50 meters behind Arluzar, Grandad Rick, and Bashak. She might be able to claw them back. You can see them here on screen right now. They're just around the bend. There's a bit of steep stuff coming up again. If she doesn't get past them at the top for the flat they're gone i think you'll see the distance open right away because you can see here purple bengal will ride at four watts per kilo all day long purple bengal's four watts per kilo is 200 watts uh someone like bashok his four watts per kilo is probably 380 yeah there we go it just showed up four watts per kilo is 382 watts on the flat you're gone that absolute number you're going to pull away and especially with the new draft dynamic coming in here. Oh, uh, sorry folks, we're missing the finish. Uh, yeah, totally missed the finish there. Uh, yeah, still brain dead, still working on that, getting back to normal. Uh, so we've got Nelson Snyder and Mark J finished. Uh, got Clive Rimmons coming in here totally solo. Awesome job, Clive. And I wanted to say again to Clive was part of the team time trial team that I was on on Friday. Did the majority of the work. I think I did one or two 30 second pulls and I was done. And then I struggled to hang on to Clive and Tony to the point where once I started bouncing at uh, 195 beats per minute, and it wasn't a comfortable 195. It was like, I don't feel good 195. Uh, I had to let off a little bit, and I thought, I'm going to drift back, hopefully hang on to Jills and Roger. They came screaming past me. Uh, I almost got dropped again, but then I was able to hang with them. So that worked out well. Team GRC reunited. Clive finishing up right now. Excellent job, Clive. Going back to TK. Uh, TK is 150 meters ahead of Jetro and should be able to hold that. Alex and Malinoel pushing strong. So you can see here on the flats, they've been able to distance Holly a little bit. So she's just out of her element here a little bit. This is not steep enough for Holly to beat those guys up. Uh, starting to enter their territory more. Alex getting stronger and stronger, really dedicated to his riding. Look at this, four and a half watts per kilo up here, chasing after Jetro. Awesome job. Right on, Alex. 
So Al, I think Alex wants a top five position today. Malinowell still there as well. So we got, we're going to have a three person sprint here. TK is at the front. TK is finishing alone. Uh, don't know much about this rider. Only a level 21 rider. So not like, you know, not new, but pretty new to Ruby. I'd say that. Uh, at least his profile is. So we've got three riders here, Jetro, Malinoel, and Alex. We're going to watch the sprint go down. Holly might have a little bit of a battle coming up with Trigger. So we're 750 meters to the finish. Let's have a quick look here. Yeah, rounding the bend. We're at the very north end. Pondero, actually we finished just on the south end of the Ponderosa Cafe. I think right at the parking lot. You're going to see it on the right-hand side, I believe. Uh, I think that shows up. Okay, so four watts a kilo, Alex. Looks like he's getting ready to pounce at any second, folks. Any second. He's moving him up. He's pushing close to five watts a kilo. Alex is trying to build some momentum now over top of the little bit of one, two percent here, and then use the advantage of momentum to race down the other side. Actually, you can see the Ponderosa Cafe in the distance here, that building up on the far right hand side. TK Ladding is finishing. Alex pushing away at three watts per kilo. Malinowell is trying to come back. And Jetro's there as well. Is anyone going to put a huge... They're probably all just gassed at this moment. Trying to get the power up. What do they have left here? Alex is finishing. Malinowell is trying to come... Malinowell jumps past Alex for fifth place. Alex is going to finish sixth. And Jetro will come in seventh. Awesome job there. The man with four names gets fifth place. Uh, trigger coming in now too. Yeah, so Ponderosa Cafe is this stuff right here, folks. Great place to look at Holly racing in for the finish, trying to steal eighth place away from Trigger, and looks like she's going to do it. Hold on, Holly. Hold on. He's trying to come back now. Holly's going to hold him off. Bashok coming in as well. Uh, Bashok, Grandad Rick. Looks like three watts a kilo here. I'm not sure if anyone's got anything left to race at this point. Grandad Rick and Bashok. Uh, I'm going to say Bashok's, yeah, they're just kind of, you know, three, four watts a kilo down the hill here. Grandad Rick just trailing in the draft. Is anyone going to jump here? So we a gentleman's finish. No, Grandad Rick's going for it. Bashok counters. Uh, we're talking eight watts a kilo here, folks. Grandad Rick just has a nose on him right now. He's got half a wheel length. Can Bashok get by? That will be a photo finish right there. That's a photo finish. I, I had to jump away. Uh, okay. Purple Bengal 13th. See, that's what happened. Purple Bengal was in within 50 meters of those riders that were ahead. There was three riders ahead. Bashok, uh, Grandad Rick, and I forget the other one. Once we got on the flats, though, they were able to pull away. And that's just the, the nature of the way it's going to be. Okay, we got three coming in here together. We got Anthony, Jill, uh, sorry, Jay Margolius, and Roger. Who's going to go for it here, folks? What's going to happen here? Anthony's going in, Roger's going in, 4 watts a kilo, five, 7 watts a kilo out of Anthony here. Pushing hard, almost 500 watts there. 1, 2, 3 coming in, photo finish for Anthony. Roger, and then Jay Margolis. Ooh, Jay might have just caught uh, Roger at the finish, but I think Roger got it. Jill's finishing up here. And again, I thought Jill's wasn't available today, so I'm glad he made it. Uh, representing. I should have been here too, but I just know I would have been too beat up afterwards. Jill's finishing strong. 270, over 300 watts here. Nobby Styles coming in right behind him. Nobby's very much my style. I think every time I look at Nobby's numbers, it's these are kind of my numbers too. Must be within a kilo or two of each other, kind of the same riding ability. Uh, yep. Nobby's got to be around 91, 92 kilograms at most. And Kraken's coming in as well. I like this yellow uh, kit today, Kraken. Finishing up nicely. Really good finish. Ooh, take a look at this. We got me and Kraken coming together. Is me going to go for it? Is Kraken going to maintain the pace and try to get away? Yep, Kraken is pushing on three, three to four watts a kilo. Me's just, it looks like me's just hanging on at this point. Yep, Kraken's gone now. Kraken's pulled it out. That four to five watt per kilo push there kind of just. Snap the elastic and me just fell back. Me's content with the 20th place. Gitgar a further 70 meters back, chasing after me. But there won't be a catch there though. Unless me really falls asleep here, because me's just coasting. Um, but Gitgar 
Oh, get or my catch from here right at the finish. It looks pretty close here. Look at this. Yes, Gitgar just passes for 20th place. So me is going to finish 21st there. Obviously, me was just said, I'm done. I'm just going to roll into the finish here. Don't blame you. 22nd place, Roger G, a rider I don't know. Hopefully, I'll find out who this is soon. Being pursued by Jeff, 65. Uh, then we've got David, 1951 here. Hopefully, we're going to see David more around. So these riders will all be finishing solo. Let's take a look at the map. Here's Jeff coming in solo. Here's that parking lot I was talking about just past the finish line. Oh, I need some higher def uh, maps here, please. Then we could see it all. We got David 1951 riding in solo. 400 meters back, we got John, who's being chased by Oscar GTZ at the second. Let's have a little peek at this. Could have a little bit of a battle here. Pushing about the same power, 310 watts, 318 for John. John's out of the saddle. Don't think he's got his white sh uh, shorts on today. Specializes in white cycling shorts. Um, it's a little running joke we have, but there is some reality to it as well. So yeah, John's got a 40 meter lead over Oscar at the moment. So that's how that's going to finish up. Let's jump back to the map. So John's the yellow dot. Oscar is the red dot here. Further bouncing back to Stu, who's being pursued by Honest Jack and Kristen. Ooh, look at Honest Jack. Honest Jack's making a move here. Look at the gap growing between him and Kristen. You can see it happening right now. Uh, a bit of the flatty stuff, maybe Honest Jack's, yeah, he's putting out more power. More, yeah, more overall power. Don't worry about the watts per kilo on this lesser incline stuff. It's the watt, it's your absolute power is what you want. Uh, he's going to develop more speed out of it. So, yeah, John's going to finish solo with Oscar not that far behind. Stu coming up for 27th. Honest Jack for 28th place. What we're going to do now, folks, we're going to just back up a little bit. Let's get back to Chris Bowie here. So, you can see these riders back here. We're on the southern part of the horseshoe. So, this is the southern end of the horseshoe. This is the horseshoe spun on its side, right? Um, and then we're going to come up to the north here, and then we're going to swing back to the east at, of the top part of the horseshoe that's on its side. Um, so we're going to just back out a little bit. We've got Ross Duke in 38th place. Ross is doing good here at Ketkapolka. I mean, look at this climb here. That's what we're going up through. This will be. This is probably the horseshoe pass right here, and I imagine that's the road up there where my mouse is pointing. Uh, so we must go by this quarry here at some point. So they're going to grind their way up through here, through all this orangey red stuff, and then this stuff up here will be the yellow gradient at the end. Let's keep working our way up. Yeah, this is fascinating. We're going to move up to Chris Bowie. Let's see where Chris is in the, in the horseshoe at the moment. So deep in the guts of the horseshoe, horseshoe. On to Gio Merlin, who's not that far ahead of Chris. So these two are kind of motivating each other. Got Eat More Cake ahead. Eat More Cake is just out of the horseshoe now. Ooh, and Chasing Hard. Eat More Cake sees Omar ahead. Omar is the rider that started a little bit late and is now up to 32nd place, doing a great job. We got Dana on here. We got John. John's just coming to the finish. Great job, John. Thanks for coming out again. Total regular now with us. Uh, so John's going to finish strong in 30th place. He's going to swing over there and get uh, a nice little coffee and a uh, cinnamon roll when he's done here. Cinnamon bun. That's what he's going to have. Uh, Danon's going to finish. Oh, Omar's coming around. Omar wants to get to the finish. If you're Canadian, you'll know it. Omar knows there's a double-double waiting for him at the Ponderosa Cafe. He's going to walk in and order that, and people are going to look at him like, Huh? What are you talking about? If you're Canadian, you know. If you know, you know. One of those, right? Uh, eat more cake, finishing nicely here too. And so we've got three riders finishing within 10, 15, 20 seconds of each other. That's Omar, Danon of Gem City ICC, Eat More Cake, the Eternal GRC rider. Um, I think there's one other rider who hasn't missed a race. I think it's probably Bashak, who has not missed a race. Maybe Roger too. Uh, I've missed several. And mostly my own choice. Um, or, to be honest, trying to put out some good videos, right? I want to get all the race coverage I can for you guys. For Inside Cycling World, 
Remember what I keep telling you? The best way to support me is share those videos, like them, subscribe, uh, share with your friends. So then we jump back. Uh, well, we're back 1.7 kilometers back to Geo Merlin here. We can take a look again now. So yeah, take a look at this. So Geo Merlin, if you look over to his left side, here's all that shaly stuff. If you look back at the map, there's an actual quarry here. So this must be like their tailings pile. Stuff that didn't work, they kind of throw over the edge here and just pile it up. Uh, let's go to Chris Bowie, see what he sees. See, it's all here again. So I think when we were down lower on the climb, let's just jump back to uh, Ross Duke. I think maybe all, that's all that stuff up here. I think that's what it is. I think it's all that stuff there. And now I could be wrong. Maybe the road is down here and not up top. That might just be a secondary path or maybe a, a secondary road because that looks like quite a bit of a way up. Um, I'm trying to see from some of these other riders if I can see another road up above them, but I mean, maybe it's up there. There could be a secondary little track, you know, up the hill a little bit. But yeah, like, take a look where Des is here. We're going to follow Des for a bit. He's just finishing up the toughest part. And then once Des is through, like once he's beside all the shale pile here, remember it's a metamorphic rock. Uh, we're going to jump to the map quickly and see the name of that quarry. It's going to pop up. Hey, check the sheep hanging out here. Don't jump in the way. Don't mess with Des. Thank you, Mr. Sheep. Apparently this road gets closed down a lot in the wintertime. It's high enough up. It's wet enough. And it gets blasted with snow. Uh, you know, I guess most people in the UK do not have snow tires. So you get a few inches of snow and it's a total nightmare up here. They probably don't have snow removal equipment the way we do over here. Yeah, so here's that quarry again. Right here, it's called the Something Quarry. Uh, yeah, it even says there, the Something Slate Quarry. I just can't see the name right now. What a great place to live. I'd love to live right here. Uh, fantastic little hiking trails all around here. Actually, there's a place nearby. I looked at it. Um, it's on the east side. It's not very far from here at all. Like Maybe like a mile, maybe a couple miles. It's called World's End. It's like a little piece of land that sticks out, and then it just drops away to the farmland down below. Really cool to see. So Geo Merlin, uh, just over a kilometer from the finish. Geo is doing great here. Going to finish up in 34th place solo with Chris Bowie chasing. How close are these two? Yeah, they can, you know, just up the road, Chris can probably just see Geo up ahead. Riding at roughly the same kind of efforts. Yeah, they're riding. Hey, you can see the horseshoe where we started way down there. Take a look at that in the top right hand corner of the screen. We have to skirt all the way around this huge cut here in the landscape. So that's why this road got built. You're not going to build a bridge all the way across here. You got to go all the way around. Okay, so Gio Merlin's going to finish alone. Chris is going to finish in 35th place. Des will finish in 36th. We've got Ket Kapolka just finishing the hardest part now. We've got our finish rider here who's been in the Discord quite a bit lately. Hope you hang around with us. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are going to be going outside here pretty quick. I'm still going to be pumping out content for the channel for Inside Cycling World. Uh, Team GRC Sunday Short Races will be still going off every Sunday. And I think that's... A lot of people have asked us, hey, are you ever going to do a longer race? Yeah, but not during the Sunday time format. Sunday is just for the Sunday Short Race. That's all it's ever going to be. It's your VO2 max, really hard effort for the week. Do whatever else you want throughout the rest of the week, but set this time aside every Sunday just to smash yourself. It could be your warm-up ride with a nice cool down afterwards. You could set this up so that you do this ride, smash yourself to oblivion, and then just do some long downhill cruisy stuff. Uh, you could go outside and do like a nice warm-up ride outside, jump inside, jump on your trainer bike and smash it with us. Whatever you want to do. Uh, Ross Duke now. Where's Ross? Yeah, again, so there's that quarry again. I think I've got this all figured out. I think. Unless that little house is... Uh, yeah, I could be... Yeah, so I think this little blurb here, which you can barely see, it's so uh, grainy here. I think that's that house right there. On the air photo. So we're going to go deep into the horseshoe. Yeah, that still makes sense, I guess. Uh, I guess it's the angle of it too. It's hard to tell by the angles which way we're looking here. 
but Ross is doing a great job here, 38th place. Uh, this kind of stuff is only going to make you stronger, Ross. So great job. Let's see. Oh, we got Gio Merlin just finishing up. Chris Bowie coming in as well. Dez finishing. Ooh, Dez is just having a little bit of a roll here, recovering after grinding up all that hard stuff, catching his breath. Kekapolka. Hopefully Dez is still there. He's still connected. He's not disconnected, that's for sure. Uh, Dez, is, Dez is taking the scenery here. I mean, look at this. This must be the uh, the Horseshoe Canyon, sorry, Horseshoe Pass viewpoint right here. Bet you that's where we're at right now. And back. Yeah, see, Dez was just having a little gander. He was just like looking out over to the right, looking across the countryside. And we're going to hang out with Ross for a bit. He's in the toughest part. So let's cheer Ross on here. Uh, so yeah, we expect some lower numbers. Sunday short race is going to run every Sunday. I will be back doing them soon. Uh, probably next Sunday. Um, I just got to get over this stuff, get all this junk out of my system. Uh, you know, I thought about it. I just hear people talk. Oh yeah, he's on ambionics. He can't race very well. Well, that's how I feel. And the painkillers just grog me right out. Um, I usually like to sleep four to five hours at a stretch. And I kind of slept for 14 to 15 hours straight yesterday, like from lunchtime on till two, two o'clock in the morning is when I got up this morning. I, my sleep's all off now. Uh, yeah, so I can see it here now. The turn's here, and I just saw a car go off the screen. So this upper stretch is not the road. We're actually on the lower section, which I was just calling out before by having a look at it. That must be like an old little cart path up top that they must use to maybe access the upper parts of the quarry. Maybe, hey, here's another sheep hanging out. The sheep are everywhere here. I guess they are, they're always on the road too. Okay, Ross is just taking a little break here. You got this though, Ross. You got to get through this. He's in the 10% stuff. Yeah, he's back moving now too. Great job, Ross. Um, but going forward into the summer, you know, hopefully this, I hope there's some uh, rains in the spring, recharge the groundwater around here. has been dry for the last couple of years. It's kind of the way it is here. We go through drought seasons and then it's really wet and then it's drought again. Uh, I'm sure most parts of the world are like that. Here's Dez coming to the finish right now. He can see the cafe just up ahead. Everyone's parked there waiting for him as we speak. Having their coffees, having their pastries, croissant, uh, the double-double. And Kekapolka's coming in too. Not that far now. 700 meters away. Um, what I've been trying to get to here is uh, people have been asking for a longer race. Maybe we can schedule that. You know, maybe we got to start thinking about when we could do that. It would have to probably be a Saturday just for people's timetables, um, especially with the nice weather. People don't want to be inside as much if they can help it. I'm actually considering doing a group ride, and I would probably make it an Inside Cycling World group ride. Um, I would just schedule it by myself, and if you want to join me, you can jump in. Um, if I know people are going to join me, I'll probably catch them all. Maybe it'll be group rides where I do more of my exploratory rides. You can jump on with me, have a little cruise, make it a group ride. So we got some good magnet effect. Uh, so all welcome, all levels are welcome. Anyone can join me and we'll go from there. Anyway, folks, I'm going to cut it short here today. It's time for me to get out of the house and do some things like I've been talking about and, uh, we'll catch you again real soon. Thanks for joining us.